We're studying out of the book of First Kings. We were at chapter 22. We're almost done. This is the last chapter. Uh, although it will probably be this week and maybe next part of next week. Next week I'll bring the I'll outlines for Second Kings. We'll start there Second go. Kings next week. Uh, so we left off uh, basically uh, with some conflicting prophets. The prophets had told uh, Ahab to go up to uh, Ramoth Gilead, and we're in verse like 15. And uh, when they came to Elijah in verse 15, let's let's start there. Just back up just a little bit. It says. So he came to the king, and the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we prosper? I said Elisha, I meant Micaiah. This, this is the prophet, prophet that uh, was prophesying. And he always, this prophet always prophesied bad to, toward King Ahab. He didn't like that. King Ahab did not like him, but they called him, and you'll notice, you'll notice right there, it says, uh, he said, he said, go and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. Okay? And then in verse 16, he says, And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee, that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord? Okay? So uh, even though Ahab didn't like this, this prophet, he uh, he went ahead and told him, You better tell me what the God says, not what, not what these other prophets are saying. Remember, we had 400 prophets all chanting at the same time. Uh, that they should go up. So let's see what he says in verse 17. And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Do not I tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me but evil? And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? One said on this manner, and another said on this manner. There came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? He said, I will go forth. I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all the prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of these prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. But Zedekiah, the son of Chaniah, went near and smote Micaiah on the cheek and said, Which way went the spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? Okay, we're going to stop there. Uh, let's go back a little bit. Uh, in verse 17, uh, notice that my Micaiah says, I saw and God spoke. Uh, what did he see? He saw that the armies of Israel would be defeated uh, and scattered in battle. And Ahab would fall in battle. So this is bad news for Ahab. Again, always bad news it seems like for Ahab. Uh, it also says that people would, be, would return without being destroyed. Uh, okay, so here we go. In verse 19 it says, I saw the Lord sitting on His throne. Now, all through scriptures we find that God's throne is very, very important. And... Uh, it says there are there there are people uh, hosts of heaven sitting on the right hand and on the left. I've, I've hand, handed out this handout, God's throne, and I have some questions here. Uh, let, let's see if we can answer this these questions, and you can look them up if you want. My first question here on God's throne: Where is God's throne? Holy temple. Huh? In the heavens. In the heavens. Okay. Anybody else? Let's look it up. Who's got Psalms 14, 11, 4, 4, excuse me, 11, 4? The Lord is in His holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold and His eyelids try the children of men. The Lord is in His holy temple. You know, we are the temple of the Lord. Amen. 
You know that? Yes. <clears throat> See, there's parallels here. We know we know God sits in the heavens, right? Mm -hmm. But He also sits in our hearts. So, Amen. And how long will this throne last? This, that's an easy one, right? How long ever. is the throne going to last? Ever, ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever, and thy scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. And where is the Lord seated? First Kings 22, 19 says, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven sitting by him. That's on, on his right hand and on his left, okay? So he's seated on the throne. Isaiah 6, 1-4 tells us what fills the Lord's temple. Isaiah 6, 1 says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting in front of his throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. the temple. Above it, the seraphims, each one had six wings, and twain he covered his face. And with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. In verse 4, And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Okay? So his, his, throne, his, his temple is filled with his train, smoke, and glory. Right? Amen. And y'all know what his train is, right? It's, it's his robe, the, the royal robe that the Lord wears. Okay. And what is, is his throne like? Daniel 7, 9, and 10. I beheld till the thrones were cast down and ancient of days did sit. Now, let, let me tell you something about thrones here. You've got to realize that I, I've done some study on thrones. And thrones are angelic beings also. They, they hold power. Each throne right, right here says, I saw till the thrones were cast down. We're talking about heavenly beings were cast down. And the ancient of days did sit whose garment was white as snow. And the hair of his head like the pure wool. His yeah. throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. Verse 10, a fiery stream issued forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him. And ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set and the books were open. Yes. I was wondering because when I had seen thrones like that, I always considered it as like, for, for example, government. Yeah, they are governments, but they're heavenly, if, heavenly but, governments. But, well, yeah, heavenly governments. Yeah. I, I mean, and it's just like, not so much, uh, not so much maybe, for example, let's just, per, the way I like to put it in my mind where I can kind of wrap my brain around, like the post office. The post office is, you know, an office. There's people that work in the post office. So the way I see a throne is like post office, and then the beings being the people. Right. Is that what we're looking at? Yeah, yeah okay. we are. We are. But these are angelic beings. So right. No, I, I understand that. I, I, I'm just... I like to There's put a it lot in. we don't know about right. these angelic There's beings. There's angelic beings working at the post office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They keep people from going uh, crazy with guns and stuff. Yeah, they're going postal. <laughs> I, or going postal, there you go. <laughs> but um, no, it's just, I like to put it in terms where it's easy for me to understand. I, I like to do a visual within my head. Yes, absolutely. You know, I picture things in my head too, especially when I read about God's throne, but we realize also that these are spiritual things that we read. Yes. And because uh, we know that the kingdom of God is forever, and we also know that we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. So, yes. Uh, a lot of this stuff was way spiritual when it was being said. And it was. It was way beyond their, their yeah, comprehension. Right. And it, 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 even beyond ours sometimes. I was going to say, yeah. it's still that way in some cases. And I have, I have another question here. What house will you build? What kind oh, of house? Yeah. What kind of throne are you building? Acts 7.48. Through 50 says, Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet, Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will you build me, saith the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? And then again we have it in uh, Isaiah 66 1. That's what he was he was actually quoting there. And uh so God's house is one that's not built with hands. Right? 
Isaiah 66, 1, Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? What kind of house are you building for God? Aren't we the dwelling place of God? That's what this question is asking. What kind of house are you building? Right. Okay. And uh, Hebrews 8, 1 and 2 tells you what the true tabernacle is. What is the true tabernacle? It says, now these things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of majesty in the heavens. A minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man. And who sits on the throne? We already established that God sits on the throne. But look at Revelation 4, 1 through 6. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, the trumpet talking, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee the, these things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in the heaven, and one sat on the throne. He that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white remnant. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Okay, well we know that, that God is seated on the throne. And as you read the book of Revelation, it, 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 it switches to where when, he, when John is watching this, this uh, before his face, that the Lamb of God appears before him slain. So we know that Jesus is, is, the, is the Lamb of God. And then uh, what happens at the great white throne? Oh, nobody wants to face that one. <clears throat> I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, the small and great, stand before the Lord. And the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and the death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, and this is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Okay. Now, I want you all to understand what the great white throne judgment is. We're all there. All of us are there. And did you notice they mentioned books and not book? But there's only one book that can get you into heaven. We're all judged out of all those books. But all the books are no good. I mean, the one, the one book supersedes all the rest of the books. Mm -hmm. like, your name's in that book with all kinds of bad things in it. <laughs> My name's in those books with all kinds of bad things. Bad, bad, bad things. You know? But my name's in the book of life. Amen. Amen. So, so what we said we will be judged according to our works, what we do. And once we reach that final book, everything's erased, Amen. except for that name in that book. It says you're given a new name, yeah. a name which is better than the name you had before. Right? So I'm looking forward to that day when, when those books are over. That's a judgment day. For, some will be cast into a lake of fire. But we will enter into a new realm. It's going to be a wonderful thing. Okay. That's all I got on the throne. Anybody have any comments before we go on? Alright. So let's keep going then. Uh, okay. So. Uh, now why did I ask that question? Verse 21, there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade them. And uh, 
Can God do all things? Yes. That's one of those trick questions because he cannot lie. I tricked every one of you. Every day I lie. I trick every one of you this time. Every time. <laughs> Can God do all things? No, he cannot. No. He cannot lie. He cannot lie. <laughs> God cannot lie. Yeah. God kill. can do anything he wants, but he cannot lie. He can kill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the one you remember. Yeah, he can kill. <laughs> he can make lie. It says that too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're funny. Can't lie about killing. <laughs> well, I don't know why I wrote that down. Did you notice that he gets a spirit to come tell to persuade to persuade the Ahab to go down there? It's a lie. He shouldn't go down there. Yeah. So he doesn't do it. If God doesn't do it himself. He sends another spirit. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what it says. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, God asked the spirit, "How are you going to get Ahab to go to battle?" And the spirit says. Uh, he was going to put a lying spirit words in the prophet's mouth, which probably was not a hard thing to do. Right? <laughs> Since they already lied before. It was easy to do. They already had that lie in their mouth. Uh, and also, remember, Ahab is the chosen king protected by God. Well, I know we went through this before. I know. Uh, you know, so uh, God must give the spirit permission to deceive Ahab. Okay. Uh, but Yahweh passed judgment on Ahab. Uh, now this guy Zedekiah, he was that high priest. Remember, we, we, last week we talked about that he was the Visar, the, the wizard. Uh, and he's also an alchemist, uh, working with iron. And he, he slaps uh, the prophet Micaiah uh, and basically says, uh, I'm the only one who has the spirit to speak through. How are you speaking through? Because Zedekiah was their high priest. So... And he, he gave, basically says, who gave you my spirit? Boy, that's a that's a that's a, a arrogant prophet. Right. I have a problem with arrogant people. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I have a problem with arrogant preachers. Mm -hmm. That's why I said when I turn on TV and start watching Christian television, a lot of them are arrogant. Bunches yeah. of them are arrogant. Uh, God forgive them. <clears throat> All right, so let's, right here, we're going to find out about Micaiah. He's put in prison. Verse 25. Micaiah said, Behold, thou shalt see in that day when thou shalt go into an inner chamber to hide thyself. And the king of Israel said, Take Micaiah, carry him back to Amnon, Ammon, the governor of the city of Joash, the king's son, and say, Thus saith the king, Put this fellow in prison and feed him with bread and of affliction, with water of affliction, until I come in peace. And Micaiah said, If thou return at all in peace, the Lord hath not spoken by me. And he said, Hearken, O people, every one of you. And we'll stop there. And I, I do hand out that other handout. I'm ready for that one now. Okay. Uh, now, how did Micaiah react to being beaten? <laughs> You know what he said? You just wait and see what God will do. Sometimes we have to be that way. We just got to wait and see what God's going to do. Uh, now, Ammon, his name is uh, it means master workman. So that might be a title of the governor of the city. Uh, so he puts him in prison, puts him in prison, puts him on bread and water, and returns to battle. Uh, You know, Micaiah is a pretty, pretty bold guy because here Ahab is having him put in prison and he's telling him that you might not return at all from this battle. You know, and the prophet, he could have been killed by, by, uh, by Ahab. Uh, but, but he's led by the Spirit and, and tells him, if you return at all, God hasn't spoke for me. And then he tells all the people, the word people there is kinsmen. So uh, mark my words, listen to what the Spirit has to say. And that's why I made this handout for listening to God. Again, if y'all would uh, pick a scripture out of these, I've got, I got several of them here. I don't want to read them all, uh, but we, we can go through them. I'm going to go ahead and read the titles. It's, it says here, if you listen to God, a wise man will hear. Your servant is listening. The battle is not yours. 
Perhaps they will listen. All of you listen. You who fear God listen. They will also listen. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. My sheep. The one who listens to you listens to me. Listen to counsel. Be quick to hear. I will teach you. Do not neglect it. Take it to heart. Blessed are those who hear. Prove yourselves a wise man and he that hath an ear. Okay, who's got one of these? Go ahead. 11, uh, Luke 11, 28. Jesus replied, But even more blessed are those who hear the word of God and put it into practice. I like that, don't you? Even I do too. more blessed. We're more blessed when we hear the word of God. Amen. Amen. Who's got to know? listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourselves. Amen. Or if you listen to the word and don't obey, it is like glancing at your face in the mirror. Yeah. Yeah. Like looking at yourself in the mirror. Just glancing. Yeah. Don't look. Just glance. Anybody got no? First Samuel 3.10 The Lord came and stood there calling as at the other time of Samuel Daniel. Samuel said, speak for your servant is listening. Speak for your servant is listening. Anytime you're not hearing from God, ask God, speak for your servant's listening, and he'll speak to you. I guarantee you he'll speak to you. Amen. He will speak to you. But you got to get the word. I, I believe you have to go through the word. Uh, don't believe every spirit you hear. Okay, let's continue on. Let's see what time I got. It's right at that time. So. This is a good place for us to stop. Ahab is killed in battle. So next week we're going to read uh, possibly, yes, probably next week we will finish the book of First Kings and I'll start Second Kings. I got, I didn't bring them this week, but I got outlines for y'all and and also uh, some uh, synopsis of the of the book to tell you about the book. So God bless y'all.